go. Hippophi ramanoids, otherwise known as sea buckthorn. Um, so yeah, this is a lovely plant. Okay, it might not look that lovely. It's kind of spiky, kind of rough. Um, but yeah, it's a really useful plant, a really medicinal plant and a really hardy plant. It's in uh, the Elignaceous family, so it's Elignaceae. Um, so yeah, similar to a lot of plants in that family, it fixes nitrogen. Um, it's very hardy, so it's, you know, like starting out using a lot of the sun. It's got a very extensive root system. Um, it's got these leaves, and you can see here, they're very kind of thin, uh, long leaves that have a white underside. So they're very well protected from uh, evaporation. It grows a lot in coastal areas. It's originally from the kind of dry temperate areas of like Asia and uh, Southeast Europe. So it's like um, quite typical in the Himalayas. It's used a lot in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so yeah, in terms of the plant, it's deoceous. So it's got um, only male and only female flowers that grow on separate plants. So you need to have um, uh, a male and female plants for it to be wind pollinated. So you get fruit. Um, yeah, here you can see it kind of makes a nice thicket. Um, one of the advantages is, yeah, it's very fast growing. It has this amazing uh, root system. It's mainly like shrubby, so kind of two to four meters. Um, but it can become quite invasive because it does sucker. So that means that from the roots, you have new shoots coming up. So it's like a good opportunist if you put it in better conditions. So like better soil, more access to water, it will be quite vigorous and aggressive. So that can be useful if you're trying to deal with um, like degraded land, if you're trying to establish a uh, forest, it can be useful as a stage of uh, succession. But yeah, if you're going to use it in a small garden, you need to be really careful that it doesn't take over. Um, so yeah, it's better used on a large scale or in drier conditions where it's not going to get out of hand. Um, yeah, there are a lot of yields from this. You can see this is from my garden. Um, we've got like a lot in our kind of border area. We've got one area, it's like a windbreak that also gives fruits and that also fixes nitrogen for a lot of perennial uh, vegetables that we have. So yeah, the fruits are these kind of really amazing kind of like little orange jewels that glow and they've got a very delicious taste. They're kind of like very sour, like a kind of lemony pineapple passion fruit taste. Uh, usually little kids love them. They love eating them and kind of making like <sighs> sour faces. Um, they're very nutritious. They've got a lot of vitamins. They've got a lot of like vitamin A, vitamin E, which is unusual for a fruit, obviously C because they're sour, like A vitamins. They've got a lot of like uh, bioflavonoids. And what's interesting that they've got a good mix of all the different omegas in them, which is really unusual for a fruit. So there are a lot of like edible medicinal uses for the fruits. The leaves are also very medicinal. They're used in a lot of different teas. The bark has also got medicinal uses in the roots. So it's like a really nice multi-purpose tree. One of the things I make from it is an old herbal uh, remedy, which is an oxymel, which you can make with different fruits. So you take the fruit, uh, you make a juice, and then you mix that with an apple vinegar, and then you sweeten it with honey or with a fruit syrup. Um, so that's a really good way of making a kind of healing elixir, which you could use for your immune system. It's a yeah, very beautiful, nutritious thing to have in the winter. Um, you can also make really good chili sauce with it, actually. You can mix the, the juice with chili and it makes this amazing fruity chili sauce. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's actinorhizal, it's working with Frankia. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of medicinal properties. So astringent, cardiac, uh, tonic, vermifuge, anti-inflammatory, radioprotective. So what they found that's really interesting is actually you can make an oil from the seeds, which is good for burns. It's also good for uh, radioactive burns. So they've used it on people who've had accidents uh, with radioactive material. 
Um, yeah, it's very protective for the heart. It's a very good tonic to keep all your body systems in order. And yeah, it's very good externally as well for keeping your skin healthy and if you have any skin complaints. And yeah, that's, that's all.